Hello. In this episode, we are going to build a form with the instant live feedback. So when we type something, we are going to get our character counter, we are going to get uh, our errors rendered, and we are going to have a live preview of the content that we have submitted. So you see, I have the character counter, there are no errors at the moment, and here I have a preview. And you see, if uh, I have more characters than is allowed, I get uh, an instant message that there are some errors. And how is it going to work? Well, we're going to have a second secret hidden button to submit the form, and it is going to lead to a different URL. Let's see how it works. I'm going to inspect element, and here we have the regular submit button that submits the form, and we're going to have a second uh, submit button that is going to go to articles preview page, and it is going to be hidden. Now, if uh, I unhide it, here it is. We have the second button that submits whenever we add anything into our form. And if we go to the network tab, let me submit something. You see, each time I submit something, we get uh, an update. So each time we submit something, we send a request uh, to the server, and the server responds with uh, the correct counter with the uh, error validation, if there are any errors, and it uh, also sends us the preview HTML. So how can we build this uh, second secret submit button that submits uh, to a separate different URL whenever we input anything and it responds with a turbo stream? Well, let's create a new app and find out. So here I've created a new Rails app. I'm going to create a scaffold with a task and a task is going to have a name and a body. Okay, so Rails db migrate, git uh, add all, git commit message scaffold tasks. Okay, and now let's navigate to our tasks URL. So Rails s and go to slash tasks. And let's create a new task. Okay. And let's add some basic validations. So I will go to our app models task.rb and I will say validates uh, name, presence, true. Same for body. Let's try to submit the task. You see, now we have these errors rendered. And let's also validate the length. Let's say validates uh, name, length. And it should be in five to, let's say, 20 characters. And something similar for the body. But let's allow more characters from 10 to, let's say, 50 characters. OK, now let's try to create. And you see we have four errors. OK, and uh, let's try adding one more submit button to the form that will have a different URL. If we go to our views, tasks, form here we have the form.submit that submits to the default url so let's have a look at it let's inspect element and uh, the url of the form is slash tasks method post and the submit button uh, just submits this form to this url and let's create one more submit button i will say equals form dot bottom Let's uh, name it preview. And uh, to set a different URL, we will say form action. And uh, we are going to add a different URL. So let's say uh, preview tasks path. And let's see what it gives us. OK, well, it says that this URL uh, doesn't uh, exist. Well, undefined local variable. So uh, let's uh, try to add this URL. I will go to our roots and say resources tasks do collection do post uh, preview. Not post, but post. Okay, let's try to refresh. And the URL now exists. Let's inspect the element. And we see that it is a button with uh, the form action. So the URL is going to be slash tasks slash preview. 
And let's actually also say that it is going to be a post request. So to do so, we will uh, also say that the name will be method and the value will be post. This way we are ensuring that it is going to be a post request. Let's refresh and look at the preview button once again. So we see button type submit, uh, value post, form action, slash tasks, preview. Okay, so we can try to have uh, a new action in our tasks controller named preview. Let's go to our controllers, tasks controller, and here we'll add a new method named preview. And uh, let's try to submit to this URL. I'll input something in the name, click preview, and well, nothing actually happened. Why? Because uh, this preview uh, action is empty. So let's uh, add something like uh, redirect to the current URL. So request.url. And let's add some kind of notice or text like notice time.zone. Dot now. And let's uh, enable notice. Uh, so the flash message notice in our form. Let's do it somewhere on the top. Equals notice. Okay, now I click preview. Uh, okay, I made a typo, it should be request. Okay, let's click preview. And you see, each time we have a page refresh, it redirects us back to tasks uh, slash uh, new, and we have this notice from our uh, preview. But uh, you see also always when we click uh, preview, it uh, submits all the attributes that we have inside this form. So let's uh, see what attributes we submit. Uh, let's have the notice be params. The params that we submit in uh, the form with this button. Let's uh, refresh and click uh, add something in the name, a body, and click preview. And here you see here are the params. So in the params we have task params with a name, with a body, method post, controller tasks, action preview. And we can also uh, get uh, just task params. Let's say task params. So a name, a body, one, two, three. I click preview. It does a full page refresh. And here we can see the uh, task params. And uh, actually, we can generate a new task object based on this and see if this new task object is valid. I would say equals uh, preview task equals task dot new task params. And uh, in the notice, let's try to display the preview task. So uh, a body preview. And here we have no ID, no name. In the body, we have uh, some content. And of course, no created ad, no updated ad, because the object was not created. Let's see if uh, this object is valid and if it has any errors. Uh, let's add some additional params to the notice. Let's say at uh, preview task dot valid. And also let's display the errors. Preview task dot errors dot count. Something like this. Let's add something in the name, in the body, click preview and valid false and errors count one. Let's say errors dot full messages. So something in the name, something in the body, preview. And it says body is too short, minimum 10 characters. So whenever we click preview, it uh, does a full page redirect and uh, tells us whether the object uh, that we submitted is valid or not. And uh, it also shows the errors. Let's try to make something valid, click preview. So now it is valid and there are no errors. Okay, looks uh, good and we're already getting close. Uh, now let's uh, not do a full page uh, redirect. Let's respond to the turbo stream. So I would say respond to do format format dot turbo stream. Okay, 
and let's create a preview.tubostream.erb template. So going to tasks, I will create the preview.turbostream.erb. And inside we can uh, display the preview task. So let's say equals turbo stream dot uh, update and we'll update some kind of div. Uh, let's say preview will be the name of the div. And uh, inside we will display the preview task attributes. And also we will uh, see if it is valid and we will display all the errors. So valid and errors dot full messages. So errors, valid and attributes. Okay, and let's add a div with the ID preview to our form. We can do it somewhere here, for example. So uh, div ID preview. Okay. And now let's see if anything happens. So uh, I will refresh the page. Now uh, inside the form, we have this uh, div with the ID preview. And when I uh, click preview, it will uh, not do a full page refresh. So you see the form attributes are still filled in and uh, it will uh, display a turbo stream with the uh, uh, the validation errors and so on. So you see when I change something in the body, it uh, says that it is valid or invalid. It shows the uh, virtual object that we have created in the controller. And uh, like this, uh, we have a preview button that is also kind of a validate button, let's say. It's kind of a validate button, right? So let's refresh. So at this moment, what do we have? We can uh, click uh, preview or click validate anytime while filling in the form and without actually creating, without clicking create, without uh, uh, responding with uh, our tasks uh, create action. Instead of this, we respond with the preview action and the preview action gives us uh, some kind of feedback based on uh, what we have filled in in the form. So it kind of works uh, quite well. Let's refresh uh, the tasks page once again. So what is left? Now we get feedback when we click validate. But what if we want to always get the instant feedback without actually having to click the validate button? Well, to do this, we can uh, create a stimulus uh, controller that would always submit uh, this uh, validate uh, button whenever we do any changes in the form. So let's do that. I'm going to say Rails generate uh, stimulus. Stimulus auto submit. Yeah, so we'll create a stimulus controller with the name auto submit. Let's go to this uh, controller, JavaScript controllers, auto submit controller. Let's add some kind of message when we connect. So console.log auto submit connected. Okay, and let's connect this auto submit controller to our form. So let's go to our form. We actually don't need this notice anymore. And here we will say data uh, controller auto submit. And now when we go to the console and refresh the page, we see that the stimulus controller has been connected. And now let's uh, add a stimulus target to our preview validate button and uh, hide this button. So uh, I will go to the controller and say static uh, targets equals, and uh, let's name a target submit button. Okay. And let's go back to our form and let's uh, ground this uh, button with this target. So I will say uh, data. Now let's add a new line here. Data uh, auto submit target will be submit button. Okay, let's refresh and see if uh, it was grounded this target. Here we see data auto submit target, submit button. 
And now let's hide this button using stimulus. So go into our stimulus controller. We will uh, say that on connect, we will hide the button. So stimulus this dot stimulus button target dot hidden equals true. Let's refresh. And you see now the button is hidden, but it is still present in the HTML. And now let's uh, make uh, a way to click this button each time we uh, add something in the form. So I will uh, add something like submit or click. Let's name it submit. And we will say uh, this dot submit button target dot click. Okay, and now we need to invoke this action in the stimulus controller. And to do it, we will go back to our form. And uh, in our form, here we have data controller auto submit, and we will add an action that will be on input. We will go to the auto submit controller and the submit action. Okay, will it work? Let's see. I try to input something in the name and you see each time when I input something in the name, we get some kind of feedback. So yeah, that's about it. Now it's uh, up to you to add some styling to the information that you receive from the preview turbo stream ERB and uh, you're good to go. Now you can get live uh, feedback uh, based on anything you fill in in a form. Having a second secret submit button that goes to a different controller action and responds with, with Turbo Stream. But uh, you might mention that it can be quite expensive uh, to send a request to the server each time when you add a character and the uh, sense of kind of validation. So let's uh, maybe add some kind of basic debounce so that uh, there is some time between uh, sending a request to the server. Uh, and you don't do it after each uh, uh, time you click a button on your keyboard. And uh, instead of just having submit this submit button target click, we can add uh, some kind of delay. So uh, first we would clear a timer, uh, clear timeout, and we'll say this dot timeout. And we would uh, also now set this timeout. So this dot timeout equals set timeout, okay, and uh, inside we would uh, say this dot submit button target click, and we would add a timeout of 500 milliseconds. Something like this should uh, work. Yeah, so some kind of basic debounce. Now I'll remove this line. And let's see if it changes the behavior. Let's add uh, a giant delay and see if it works. So I will input something and you see we don't get any uh, feedback uh, momentarily, but after a larger period of time, uh, the request should be submitted. Let's make it a bit smaller and see if it works. So I'm trying to submit something and you see the changes are not uh, given that fast. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for being with me and uh, see you in the next episode.